Hi everybody, this is uh, Scott George and I am delighted to introduce to you a wonderful dear friend of mine. As you know, I'm on vacation this week. Uh, we are celebrating our 17th year going down to West Palm Beach with the entire George family. So about this time I'm sitting on the beach and I'm uh, reading my Bible. And uh, unable to be here this week, but I wanted to bring in Alan Youngblood. I've known Alan and Julie for over 20 years now and they are an anointed couple. Alan's coming in just a few moments to preach and he is going to do a fabulous job for you. I trust them completely. They are anointed and they are a wonderful godly couple that's going to come and minister to you today. So uh, please welcome them with the Pine Castle spirit and let them know you love them. And I will be back next week ready for a great time together. God bless you. Thank you, Pine Castle. Good morning, Pine Castle United Methodist Church. How are you this morning? That was a nice introduction from Pastor Scott. Don't you love your pastor? He is a good man, and, and you don't need me to tell you that. But I did serve his, as his youth pastor. Um, he gave us one uh, our second opportunity in ministry. Julie and I worked with Fellowship of Christian Athletes um, many years ago, and, and we led a group in a public high school and uh, he saw the impact that we were having there and he had a church right down the road and and invited us on board and it has been a fun ride and so i uh, i'm responsible he's responsible for everything that uh, goes right today and wrong today so <laughs> uh, we have known each other for 20 years i would like to introduce the most intelligent and pretty part of this combo and that would be my wife, Julie. Julie, just stand up and say hi. Would everybody welcome my wife this morning? She is the teacher of the year at Red Bug Elementary. And uh, my girls, you know, people say, gosh, look at your girls. I say, yes, they get their good looks from their mom, but they get their brains from their mom. And I'm just along for the ride. You know, it's so good seeing Bruce getting connected with old friends that we see from time to time. I think the last time I saw you, if it wasn't on television, it was at, um, what's that fish place that you like? Boston's. Boston. Yep, a Boston's fish house. And uh, it's it powerful anointing. <laughs> powerful, greasy anointing at that place. Um, but, you know, it is an honor to be invited here, truthfully. Uh, we pastor a church across town, and um, the, Pastor Scott is very wise. He realizes that we need to raise up other people in our church, and this has given someone else an opportunity to speak at our church that feels called to ministry. And uh, to be invited in a place where the pastor has trusted me and gone on vacation uh, is absolutely crazy, but <laughs> is, is an honor. It truly is to be invited here. So thank you for allowing me to come and be a part of your worship service today. Uh, the worship is beautiful and the people are beautiful. And uh, Michelle has been absolutely beautiful. Um, what an organizer and, uh, and you're, what a tremendous asset to this church. Amen. Um, let's pray. I, I, you know, I really, now if, does Pastor Scott chase rabbits? You know what that means, right? Does he get off task and get on? Okay, so, so that's his fault if I do that because I learned from him. And, uh, but I believe God wants to do something this morning. And I sensed it even stronger during that song, How Great Is Our God? Because I believe if we magnify God today, we're going to have a powerful tomorrow. Amen? Father, thank you for the word this morning. Thank you for the worship and the team that has brought this day together. God, not, not only do you want us to be uh, receiving the benefit of sacrifice and the word and worship and time and preparation, but you also want us to be a purveyor of that anointing and that hope and that joy that comes from being together with Christian brothers and sisters here at Pine Castle. So I pray, Father God, that you do something powerful, that you do something mighty, and that at the end of it all, Jesus Christ would be glorified. And if you agree with that, just say amen. amen. 
Many of you have seen God do some mighty things in your life. You have seen God work in a tremendous way. And as some of us begin to creep up the ladder of age, I want to encourage you, it's not over. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come for Pine Castle United Methodists. God is restructuring, God is reorganizing, and God is putting people in places they need to be. God is taking one out and he's bringing another one in, and maybe two or three or more. God is not done with Pine Castle United Methodist Church. Can I hear a healthy and hearty amen? amen? Why do I say that? Because we may sometimes say, oh, how did I end up here? We, we, we may say, um, what's going to happen next? But how many believe that God is actively and purposely working in the earth today? I get this from Pastor Scott, four of you. Um, <laughs> How many of you believe that God is actively and purposely working in the earth today? Because that really sets precedence for the rest of what we want to share and a little blanks we want to fill in our notes. I'm, I'm telling you, God has you here, sir. God has you here for a reason. Just as the world is growing darker and darker, Jesus, the Son, is becoming much brighter and lighter and being more recognized by the world. There may be some difficult days ahead. Jesus said, in this life you'll have trouble. But he also said, encouraging us to take heart, I've overcome the world. So God's, the, the most powerful days for God's church is ahead of us, not behind us. We haven't seen all there is. The best is yet to come. Say it with me. The best is yet to come. In fact, if you look in 2 Thessalonians, this isn't in your notes, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 talks about the coming Antichrist and talks about the end of the time. And then it says something, and due to the lack of time we have this morning, it says something very important. It says that the restrainer is holding back the evil one um, before he's unleashed. And I believe, I'm not a theologian, I'm an encourager and I'm a teacher, a motivational teacher, not a motivational speaker, but I believe to motivate, encourage people to look into God's Word and see that the restrainer um, seems to indicate, even the greatest theologians believe, that the restrainer in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 is the Spirit-filled church is a spirit-filled church. Just imagine when you take the church out of the world, what happens on this earth afterwards? And it's you, wherever you are, you are having an impact, which is the title of our series, I believe, today, or the message, the Holy Spirit at work in you. You are responsible today with your presence at your workplace, with your presence at the Thanksgiving table, with your presence anywhere you walk, as a spirit-filled believer, you are holding back evil. Do you see that? I'm in public education. I teach at Lake Howell High School. And I'm bivocational as well. And um, I know this. When I'm absent, my students' behavior is a little different than when I'm present. And I'm left to figure a lot of things out when I get back. Okay, who put this up here? All right, who wrote on that? Whose booger is that? No, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I get that from Pastor Scott, I told you. Okay. And, um, and you have to figure some things out. But what happens is, when I'm in the classroom, I become a restrainer. I hold back evil. And when you put someone that's not certified, someone that doesn't have the teaching experience in the classroom, 
and you put a substitute who's in the corner reading their book instead of governing a class, students begin to change their behavior. And that's what happens. Your children act a lot different when you're not there at the house than when you are. You become a restrainer. You hold back. Well, not all children. <laughs> you hold back evil. You hold back behavior that wouldn't be godly. And I believe that the church is doing that right now. It's holding back. You, a Holy Spirit-filled person, is holding back the entrance of the Antichrist and, and, and a unleashing of evil like the world has never seen. You have a purpose and a reason being right where you are in Orlando. God needs you, Pine Castle. So let's look at some scriptures this morning. I want to start in your notes. If you'll look at um, John chapter 14, I believe we have some information up here on the screen. The Bible says, I want to, I want to talk to you about the Holy Spirit working in you. And I want to, I want to get past a lot of theology. There, I, I don't believe the Holy Spirit was meant to be a big theological discussion. God has a purpose in giving us the Holy Spirit. And I want to touch on two words that will hopefully be real simple to remember once we uh, leave this place today and recognize the work that God is doing in your life. The Bible says in John 14, 17, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. So this is speaking of the Holy Spirit. This is a, a scripture I've taken out of a large portion of that chapter that speaks on the Holy Spirit. This scripture here refers to the Holy Spirit being in us. The next scripture I wanted to share with you comes from Acts chapter 1. And it reads this way. But you will receive power, someone say power, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, telling about people everywhere in uh, Judea, everywhere in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So we have two major purposes, and ready to fill in our blank, for the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit can be summed up primarily in two major ways and then broken down multiple ways beyond that but number one the Holy Spirit comes in us uh, 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 to indwell to indwell that's your first blank to indwell the Christian to live in the Christian number two the Holy Spirit empowers the Christian these are the two primary functions of the Holy Spirit to indwell in you and to empower you. Um, the indwelling means to stay in a given place. So when the Holy Spirit comes in you, He comes to abide. He comes to stay. He comes to dwell, to endure. He comes to be present in your life and remain. When the Holy Spirit empowers your life, that word power you've probably heard this before, before, comes from a Greek word dunamis, and it means to force, to, to give the ability. It means to give power to, strength, and power to actually perform miracles. So we have the indwelling, the Holy Spirit comes in us to live in us, and then we have the empowering to work through us. So I've got a couple of uh, blanks here on each side to kind of compare the indwelling and empowering. And let's go through these very quickly. Are you all with me this morning? Um, indwelling. Indwelling. When the Holy Spirit indwells us, He matures us, causing us to grow. Causing us to grow. When the Holy Spirit empowers us, He equips us, helping us to serve helping us to serve. The indwelling happens once. You get born again, and when you get born again and you give your life to Jesus Christ, 
and you believe that Jesus died and rose from the dead and he's alive and you put your faith in Christ and Christ alone, you're a Christian. And when you are a Christian, you have received the Holy Spirit. Can I hear an amen? amen. This happens once. Empowering is a continual event. You can be filled, dependent upon the situation, dependent upon the work and service that God wants you to do. You can be filled continually. Do not be drunk with wine, but be filled. And that word means to be continually filled, as needed. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Indwelling produces fruit. We have a list of the fruit of the Holy Spirit in Galatians chapter 5. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. And then empowering activates the gifts. And we find this list, the scripture reference in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We have the fruit that is a byproduct of your life being indwelt with the Holy Spirit. Him in you saying, uh-uh, don't do that. Uh-uh, you need to go this way comforting you and guiding you. And then you have the empowering of the Holy Spirit saying, I need you to do something now. You see that person over there? I need you to say something to the crowd. Would you please do that now? I need you to stand up at work and say this. Will you do this now? And many times we back down. No, I don't want to do that. No, that's not what I'm, I'm not called to do that. No, I'm not and we look at our own ability and our own strength. That's where you stop and God begins. He will empower you to do the thing that you think you can't do. He will give you strength to walk through storms that you never thought you could walk through. He will empower you. And that's what God's people need, an empowerment to do the things that God's called you to do on this earth. See, indwelling develops character, integrity, honesty. You become more like Christ. Empowering gives you the ability of Jesus. The things I do, even greater works shall you do. How many believe that this morning? I could actually do something greater than Jesus? That almost sounds sacrilegious. But he wants to empower you. He was limited in his day to a certain area. We have access to the whole world in one post of a Twitter. Tweet. <laughs> so, the indwelling brings God's word to life. The indwelling brings God's word to life. I remember before I got saved, my dad would say, son, you need to read through the Bible. And I'm like, that sounds like a good idea. And then I started with the beginning of the Bible, Genesis. And then I got to a lot of begats in my King James Bible. And I'm like, dad, what's a begat? Son, you need to look it up. And uh, I found out what begat means. Anyway. Some of you are getting that. But it began to become dry. It began to uh, not connect with me. And the reason why is because I wasn't born again. I didn't have the Holy Spirit in me to illuminate, to make God's word come to life. And that's why it was such a struggle for me. I'm just telling you, this is the way it was for me. And then when I gave my life to Jesus Christ, when I walked down an altar at a play, evidence that demands a verdict and I actually saw what Jesus Christ and it began to connect with my heart at that moment I could not stay out of God's word I, 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 I had what I call bedroom Bible college I had Bibles all over my floor a half moon shape in my room I'd lay on a pillow on the floor and I would write in my journal and I would mark up my Bibles and I could not get enough of them I couldn't get them off my mind I couldn't get him out of my heart. I didn't want to talk about anything else but him. 
Instead of watching the shows that I used to watch, I just wanted to spend time with him. TV didn't become a great interest to me anymore. Jesus became an interest. I became addicted to Jesus. And when you have an encounter with him, you, you, you can't shake him. The Holy Spirit's in you, and when the Holy Spirit is in you, He's always nudging you to do things for people and to, to serve Him and to hunger after Him. That's the work of the Holy Spirit, to draw you closer to Jesus and to have the character. So when you draw closer to Jesus, you know you start to look more like Him. You begin to mirror His image. And I begin to, to I didn't grow the beard, but I begin to, in character, Stop lying, stop cheating, stop cussing, stop getting angry, stop being short-tempered. We all struggle with those things because we're in the flesh. But when you draw closer to Jesus and you spend time with Him, your awareness to sin becomes heightened. Your love for people becomes heightened. Does this make sense this morning? Empowering... Indwelling brings God's word to life. Empowering brings God's help to others. It brings God's help to others. God wants to get to people. And how does he get to the people? Through Pine Castle United Methodist Church. Through you. You are the conduit of God's spirit and God's intention and God's purpose and God's will on this earth. You are. God wants to use you in places that Pastor Scott George cannot go. In the way Michelle cannot go. God wants to use you in a great way where you are. You are impacting your place and section on this earth like nobody else can. God's given you a little territory and he wants you to take it. In his name. Amen. Uh, God's indwelling brings new hope, it brings new peace, it brings new love, it brings new joy, it brings new direction. God's empowering brings a timely word. It is a powerful miracle. It's a, I like this, it's a burst of faith. It's a word of wisdom. These are the, these are the listings are def, defining of uh, uh, principles of the gifts of the spirit it's a needed healing so god is at work in us and he wants to work through us isn't this wonderful um i've heard now you know in acts chapter two uh, acts chapter one there's the upper room experience the disciples this is a little revelation i got just the other day it's not a deep one but i'm not a deep person um the Holy Spirit was received when Jesus was about to check out. He's like, okay, boys, I'm, I'm out. He rose from the dead. He said, now I want you to wait in Jerusalem, and you're going to be endued with power. You're going to be filled with power. And then he breathed on them, and it said, receive the Holy Spirit. And that's an actual reception, like you receive a gift and you hold it in your hand. He just didn't blow on them. How'd that feel? Does my breath stink? No, that wasn't what happened. He breathed on them and the disciples received the Holy Spirit. There is the act of the indwelling. Now the disciples went from Old Covenant to New Covenant. They became New Testament Christians. You have to have the reception of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus blew on them. An actual reception of the Holy Spirit took place. Isn't it interesting? What did God do in the beginning of time? He spoke, and out of his breath, the world was formed. And the second creation is when Jesus spoke and blew on the disciples, and they received new life. Someone say hallelujah. That, that is a good thing. So Jesus is creating new life right there, a New Testament Christian. So the disciples now have the indwelling. Now, Jesus knew that this is a rough deal. They just crucified me. And they, those same boys that crucified me, they're still walking around. And they're about to do the same thing to my boys here. In fact, every disciple died a martyr death except for one. And it's believed that uh, uh, 
John died on the island of Patmos. And that's where he wrote the books of Revelation. And so, so here we are. We've got the disciples told by Jesus, now that you have the receiving, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, I want you to wait in an upper room. I want you to wait. So they receive the Holy Spirit, and one of the acts that empowered them, we know Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit fell, don't we? The Holy Spirit fell. One of the acts that empowered the Holy Spirit is that 10-day prayer session. That 10 days. They didn't wait up in that room a long time. 10 days they prayed. That prayer time activated the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And watch this. Once the Holy Spirit fell and it looked like tongues of fire over their head and there was a rattling and rolling and shaking going on in that upper room, one of the first things they did was come down from the upper room they went into the same streets on a holiday, on a holiday where nations had come, people from different dialects had come and gathered in the streets celebrating, eating camel burgers, um, celebrating, and they began to speak in tongues. But when they began to speak in tongues, they spoke in a language they had not known but the people that were there heard them in their own language it was an absolute miracle God's first empowering gift was to communicate the gospel that Jesus Christ rose from the dead and he loves you that's the first message and he did wow what a miracle he did it in such a way that the disciples, the 120 in the upper room, didn't even know all the languages there. They just began to speak, open up their mouth, empowered with courage in an environment that was hostile to their life and their Christian walk and their confession that Jesus Christ from, rose from the dead. He, they in, were empowered to speak the gospel. What we need to pray is that God would empower us Believers, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. That we would have the strength to do that. And then Peter got up and he preached his first message. And thousands of people gave their life to Jesus Christ that day. They said, what, what, what must we do? Man, your words are cutting right to our heart. What, what must we do? And what did Peter tell them? He says, repent. Repent. And be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Really being filled. Being filled. Receive the Holy Spirit. And this is for you and your sons and all those who are far off speaking of us today. The Holy Spirit is still at work. How much time do I got? No, no, not all that. No, they're going to kick me out of here. Ten minutes? Okay, good. Uh, how's this so far? We doing good? Can I get anybody anything? My wife's here to serve you. you get a drink. Um, see, I've heard that the upper room was never meant to be a hotel you check into and never check out of. That's what happens to the church. The church is not a place where you check into and never check out of. It was a place of empowerment. The upper room was a place of empowerment. 120 people were filled and then out on the streets in 10 days, and 3,000 people got saved. 3,000 people were saved. See, being filled with the Spirit was never meant to be a theological discussion. It was, being filled with the Spirit was not about feeling good. Man, Martha, that sure did feel good. I think I want to go back to that service again. <laughs> that was wonderful. I felt the Holy Ghost all over me. Not, and, and, and I don't mean to make slight of that. But I believe when a holy, righteous, pure God comes in contact with flesh and empowers you, there's going to be some kind of reaction. Some people cry. Some people fall down. Some people raise their hands. Some people just sit there and stare. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Some people, some people uh, uh, build more confidence. 
Uh, some people fall down. Some people in the Bible says some got, get raised right back up. It's amazing what God can do. And everybody is in a different place. And all we want is, however it works, just God capture their heart. And God use them. Let's don't give up on people. Amen? Well, that's not the way I'd do it. I wouldn't do it that way. It makes me feel uncomfortable that way. You know, maybe you need to talk to God about that. God, I don't like it when you do this. But sometimes God, my daughter doesn't like it when I make her clean up her room sometimes, you know. But I know it's good for her, don't you? I know it's good for my daughter to brush her teeth. Sometimes she don't want to. No, not my girls. Hey, I was at the uh, uh, Seminole Mall. Have you ever been to the Seminole Mall down there? It's kind of on the opposite side of town. But I went in there. We had a soccer tournament. And for a break, we went in and ate in the food court. And then, my memory served me correct, up by Dick's Sporting Goods, there's 10 massage chairs. So I let the girls go up to Dick's Sporting Goods, and I went and I sat in the chair, one of those massage chairs, and I, I put a dollar in it. And it was brand new ones, too. I knew that because there wasn't oil over the back of the chair. And, there, so, and I, I'm a little weird that way. You know, I kind of like to look at those things. Look to see if people's hair stuck to it. <laughs> and I sat down in the chair. I put my dollar in. And um, that thing just started. Oh, my gosh. I thought I, I thought I was in Hawaii. It felt so good up and down my back. So I put another dollar in. And it only gives you three minutes. I saw five bucks would give me 15 minutes, and I should have just put the five bucks in anyway. So I went ahead and put the five in. So I was just sitting there and share it and just enjoying it. And just I was getting a good feeling. I was feeling relaxed. I felt safe. I felt comforted in dwelling. But I knew my purpose wasn't to sit in that chair, that I had a responsibility for others. I had to get people places. I had to empower, I had to, I had to allow God to work on my insides and prepare me, prepare my heart, prepare my mind to serve Him. And so what I did at that time, I realized that I needed to get up out of that chair. That chair was very comfortable, church can be very comfortable, but the goal of that massage chair is to prepare me to do the work that I'm supposed to do. It's to empower me. And that's what the Holy Spirit is here to do. He, I, I don't want to minimize him at all. I don't want to, I don't want to uh, degrade the Holy Spirit the slightest. But if my analogy of a, of a massage chair can encourage you today to say, I need to get up out of this chair. But I can't do this in my own strength because as I sit here and reflect, I realize that there are people watching me. There, there, this could cost me my job. This could make people not like me. Well, I've never asked anyone to do anything out of anger and frustration. But I am asking you to let God use you. See, we have several fill in the blanks we didn't get to. But I can briefly tell you, looking at the book of Acts chapter 4, we see... The characteristics of a Christian who win, who has the Holy Spirit at work in their life. Number one, they're a person of prayer. Ten days. That's not the rule. That's an example. They spent ten days in prayer, preparing. And they really didn't realize how or what preparing for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Number two, you become a person of passionate purpose. A person of passionate purpose. You begin to know what it's clear that you're called to do. I, uh, you know, I, boy, I feel like getting a little sentimental. Hmm. You know, when I met Pastor Scott George, Boy, this is coming full circle right now. And uh, being called to ministry, I, 
I never saw this day. I just kept saying yes. That's all I did. I just kept saying yes. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, I'll do that. We want you to leave this church. Okay, I'll do that. I just kept saying yes. And uh, being adopted, there's some insecurity I had in my life. Why was I giving up? Why did they put me in a hospital? Why did I spend... Why did I spend three months in the hospital? Why didn't mommy take me home? And God's used that to strengthen my life to know that my Father in heaven will be with me no matter what happens to me. No matter where I go. You know, my biological, my, my, uh, my uh, adopted dad is in heaven now. He's passed away. And, and you know, I'm, I'm, my mom is in in, in, in my mom is in a, a nursing home after a fall. And I think, well, who's left? It's me. And I've got to carry this on. And so, Jesus, I need you. I am nothing without you. And since the day that Scott George invited me to be a part of his life, I have sought God nearly every day some days more than others but every I have not gone a day without thinking of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ not one day I can't get them out of my mind so how can we be filled this morning how how how, how can we be filled with the Holy Spirit I, I how many of you say this morning you know I need that I, I need a fresh and filling I I really I've got some things ahead that are going to require some great wisdom. Uh, I, I've, I've got some situations ahead of me that are very complicated, Pastor. And, and you know, I, I know that in my own strength, I can't govern my family out of this. Uh, it's a financial crisis that I have faced that I, I, I have no way of knowing how this is going to go. This could cost me everything. I just, God, I just need, I've got to go in the classroom tomorrow, summer school. And the kids in summer school, they're really tough. And I just don't know how I'm going to do this. God, I need you. How many are in that place right now? Let me see your hands. I need you. Come on. I need you. Let me tell you how. Let me tell you how. This is, this is back to basics, I guess. But let me tell you. I'll, I'll close with this. Number one, can the worship team come on up? Is it possible the, the singers can? Number one. You just got to seek them. The disciples were in the upper room and they just sought God. They, they wanted more of God. And it wasn't so they could get goosebumps or feel good in the moment and sit in a massage chair, but they knew there was a job at hand. See, you've got a job at hand this morning. You're going to leave here and we're going to leave the comfort massage chair, but we want to be empowered to go out there and make the impact that God's called. We still got, grand, we got some grandbabies we still need to pray for. There's some kids out there that are acting cray-cray. For the over 50 crowd, that includes me. Crazy. We do. We got, we, got, we got the world doing some crazy things. Internet's filled with fear of ISIS and, and turmoil. and We got a lot going on. But we weren't called to have a hideaway. We were called to go out there and impact. Seek Him. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Just seek Him. Number two, get back to your devotional life. Read your Bible. Get on a plan. You don't have to read the Bible in a year. Read a scripture a day off your app on your phone. Read your Bible. Get connected with the one who wrote the Bible. Stay close to him. Journal. <coughs> Write down what God's telling you. Get back to the old journals you used to keep. Get back to those places when you begin to write down when God used you. I prayed for someone today and they said they felt better. Reread your old uh, journals where God worked. And then number three, the last thing, magnify him. 
tell him how great he is. How great is our God. Why don't you stand with me this morning and I'm done. But I want to end the service with magnifying the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Can we do that this morning? How great is our God? Is our God sing with me? Come on, would you lift your hands? Sing it. How great is our God? Come on, with all your heart. How great is our God? Come on, sing with us. How great is our God? Oh, how great, how great. One more time, one more time. Just magnify them. Make them big in your heart this morning. Oh, how great is our God. we come and we magnify you and we make you large in our life. Lord, we will not give the mountain of worry and the mountain of fear and the mountain of depression more power in our life than we give you. We will not give it more attention in our life than we give you. We lift up the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I ask that you fill your people with your spirit in a mighty way to be empowered to do the things that you've called them to do. And at the end of the day, we promise to give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And everyone said a big amen. Thank you.